Cicero, Oratio in Catalinum Prima, Episode 1. Quo usque tandem abuteir de Catalina patientia nostra, quam dio etiam furdror istatuus nos eludet, quem ad finem se se efrenata jactabet adacia? These three sentences may be the most famous in the entire Latin corpus. At least they compete with the opening of Caesar's De Bello Gallico and Virgil's Aeneid, and so it is with some trepidation that I approach them, and yet the style is very rich and the content is significant. Cicero begins with an address to Catiline himself, and he says, Quo usque tandem, up to what point, quo usque, at last or finally, shall you abuse or misuse Catiline, patientia nostra, our patience, our long-suffering. Quo is an interrogative adverb that means to where, in quem or ad quem locum, to what place, into what place, while usque is an adverb that means continuously or without interruption, and tandem is temporal, noting time or sequence. To what end, without interruption, finally, exactly how long, precisely to what extent, Catiline, Catalina, masculine, singular, and vocative, is a first declension masculine. So its declension is in the nominative a, am, accusative, i, i, and a, ablative, and it is a masculine noun. And so Cicero addresses his opponent in the Senate, How long shall you, O Catiline, abuse abutere patientia nostra? The verb abutere is a deponent verb, meaning that it has only passive endings, and it has active meanings. It is a compound of utor and ab. Utor likewise is deponent. The second principal part is ab uti. It is a third conjugation verb. This form, abutere, is the future tense. The present tense would be abuteris, like so, with a short e, and the future is abuteris. How long shall you abuse? The verb utor is one of five deponent verbs, all of them third conjugation, which employ the ablative, and these are fruor, to enjoy, fungor, to administer, to execute, to accomplish, potior, to have power or control over, utor, to use or employ, and wescor, to eat, consume. Each one of these verbs patterns with an ablative, as its object, so to speak. Now, it's not actually an object, but it serves with respect to the verb as the accusative serves to a transitive verb. It is in effect, or in fact, I should say, patientia nostra, here it is an ablative of means. So, abuse by means of, make use of our patience, patientia nostra, in order to accomplish some end. So, how long will you do that, Catiline? Then he asks his second question, quam diu? Diu means for a long time, and with quam, this interrogative adverb, which we translate as how, we get the meaning for how long a time, in fact, even, also. Notice how the first two sentences begin in a very similar fashion. We have quo usque tandem. We have interrogative adverb adverb quam diu etiam, interrogative adverb adverb. For how long a time shall furor istatuus, shall that, and here we have the pejorative or derogatory iste, which has this hissing sibilant in it, for how long shall that madness furor of yours nos eludet, make fun of or mock us? The verb eludet is the third conjugation, eludo eludere, and because it has an e, we know that it is future tense. For how long then shall that madness of yours make fun of us, sport with us? And the third sentence in today's selection, also an interrogative. Quem ad finem, to what end, for what purpose? Quem is the interrogative, it's masculine, singular, and accusative, agreeing with finem, it's an interrogative adjective. For what purpose shall Ephrenata audacia, shall your unbridled Ephrenata is an adjective, it means to take off the reins, the brakes, or the bridle. So we would say, shall your boldness that's unbridled, knowing no bounds, shall it strut about, yaktabit seise. Yaktabit is the future of the first conjugation verb, yakto, yaktare. It's taking this reflexive object. Seise is the emphatic form of se. And se yaktara means to 
pretend one is very important to preen and strut like a peacock. We see that the construction of these three sentences is very similar, quo usque tandem, quam diu etiam, quem ad finem, each with a future verb, but none of the verbs in the same place, abutebra in the middle of the sentence, a ludet at the end, and jectabet near the end but not the final word. This follows the rhetorical principle of variatio. This is an engraving of Barlocini from 1849. Here is Cicero, and here is Catiline being denounced.